Hey everybody, so I have another fun repair here. This is uh, HP this time, and we're going to go ahead and look to see what the issue is. Um, there were, the customer tried to upgrade to Windows 11, and they had a problem along the way, and now it's not booting to operating system as well, and we need to go ahead and get the data off because the data is important. So let's go ahead and see what the issue is. You can see this is a nice, one of those Evo i7s, so very, very new. Uh, it should probably support Windows 11 out of the box. So I don't believe that they actually had Windows 11 yet, but I, I thought these came out when the, when the, with Windows 11 right out of the box, but maybe got it right before Windows. So let's go ahead and uh, we'll turn it on and we'll see really what the problem is. But I think it just sits here. It just keeps looping and it doesn't move um, outside that. So we need to install Windows, right? But first we want to get the data because the data is really important. I wasn't actually able to see any drives that were installed on here. All right, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna try our bootable. Um, if you wanna check out how to make a bootable, we do have um, a video on how to make a bootable of it, and we wanna go ahead and use that so we can go ahead and see the data. So we have like Windows to go. Um, go ahead and check out our video if you're interested and see how to make one of these, and we can go ahead and plug this in and see what the issue is. So let's go ahead and plug this in. And I'm gonna start from there. So I'm just gonna hit our F9 key, I think. Yeah, it's F9 on this model. You see there's a few options here. We do have our boot manager, which is Intel Optane drive. So the Intel Optane looks like to be what's installed on here, and that, that must be an SSD. Uh, it's probably gonna be a Mi SSD. And we wanna boot to our um, USB drive there. So we do know that the, at least the Optane exists, it's there, and it's just having trouble booting to it. Obviously you saw little circles in the beginning where it was trying to load to Windows. But let's go ahead and boot to our USB. All right, so we are booting with our USB. Let's go ahead and see if we can see the data. And we go to this PC and we don't see any drives here. And we did see it though, when we went to our, um, when we were doing a boot option. So that BIOS does see it, but we don't see a drive here. So then you're probably like, well, all right, let's go check Disk Manager. So when I bring up Disk Manager, and this should show all the disks that are there. There clearly isn't any other disk here that besides the USB that I have. It's a 64 gig USB, even though it shows up this. And man, we're a bit locker encrypted too, so that's not good. But there's no other drives here. Um, if we actually go to, to uh, Device Manager, um, I did notice something here, and it says it's RAID controller. Um, you're probably thinking this is a very thin laptop. There probably isn't two drives in there, and that's kind of the case. Uh, this is actually one drive. A lot of these ones, and we did see that there was an Intel Optane drive, those Intel Optane drives are usually an SSD, and then it does come with an Optane module that's built into the actual drive itself. So it'll be one drive, probably about like this, probably looks like a, and it does, actually I might have one here, let me see. This is exactly what's probably in there, or something, no, this isn't exactly what's in there, but it's gonna look something like this. This is Intel Optane drive, and this is just for, I think, a 16 gig, where it's gonna help speed up the hard drive. It's a, it's a cache drive that's gonna help speed up pretty much the, the solid state drive or regular hard drive. They're a little bit better for, for regular drives because they're gonna help speed it up. SSDs doesn't help as much, but it can't. Um, this one does have it built in, and there would be a drive that looks very similar to this. It's more of an NVMe drive, so the connection might be a little bit different, but it's gonna have this module actually on maybe like a 500 gig or a one terabyte drive or 250 drive, it depends on the configuration that the client got. But uh, we, we know that that's most likely what's in there because we saw that there was an Optane drive that was in there when we were trying to go through our boot menu. So what we want to do, it looks like that there is a RAID controller here, and we want to make sure that we install that RAID controller. All right, that did absolutely nothing. We go to the drive, and we still don't see it there. It's still not there. So uh, we're just going to go into the BIOS. Let's hit F10. We turn it on. You just keep spamming it just to make sure you get it. All right, there it goes. You want to go to Configure, and you want to go to UEFI. I'm going to go to UEFI HII Config. Go ahead and see we have an Intel rapid storage uh, technology driver here and we do have an Optane and it looks like it's about one terabyte it's a big boy it's a one terabyte it's going to show up as 953 but you see it's Intel RST and it tells you exactly what driver it is now if you're familiar with the RST VMD driver that is the same one when we actually talked about that was in the the Lenovo uh, laptop we did for repair if you want to go if you have a Lenovo laptop go ahead and check that out because that's what you really want to look it's gonna be the same thing but you're going into the setting and it's a VMD driver. Uh, we want to make sure we disable that, but let's go into Optane and we want to disable it. And you can see there is a RAID actually here and 
You see that there's two partitions here and uh, there's the 953 gig and there's a 27 gig. Disable this and what we want to do is we want to make sure that we preserve the user data um, and and that's just going to to make at least being able to show up on Windows so we can get the data off. So it says are you sure you want to disable and you want to put yes. Disable might take a couple minutes to a couple hours. I guess if you have time, well, we don't have a choice, so you have to wait and do it, so just disable it. We disabled it, and this is it just brought us right back to the screen. It did take a little bit of time, probably took like five or ten minutes. It didn't really take like an hour or a few hours like it said it could. Um, so we're not worried about this anymore, and we want to make sure that we save the setting because I'm pretty sure we're ready to save it, but we can save changes and exit. And we're, we can do one of two things now. You guys can either skip ahead. We can go see if we can go ahead and install. Um, the actual OS on there or if you need your data we also want to see if we can get the data so if you need to install it uh, we can go to that part right away otherwise let's see if we can go get the data we'll try with a bootable and also I want to plug in our bootable if you're interested in seeing I don't know how to make a bootable one of these I think this is Windows 10 to go but this is actually a Windows 11 one we just like to make everything confusing around here so we're gonna go ahead and hit save and exit okay now we're booted to our main page here uh, it's just gonna tell you Oh yeah, this is basically bootable. And let's go ahead and see if we can see the drive again now. Load this PC. And we see the magical whoa. <laughs> we see the magical bit locker there. So at least the drive is seen, and now we can at least uh, get to it, but obviously we need a bit locker key. So if we go to disk manager, um, we will see there's a there's a few things. There is our unknown, there's our USB, which is our 57 gig that we showed before. And then there's also two other partitions, disk zero and disk one. Disk one is the Optane drive that it thinks it's its own hard drive because there's space on it. There's about, uh, I think it's like a 32 gig um, drive that's actually on the Optane for the cat for cache purposes. Um, and then there's also the 953 gig uh, solid state drive that's there. So all the partitions are there now. Uh, unlike before where we just had the USB partition and we definitely uh, at least got we were able to at least see that there is a drive here and uh, it's bit locked and all we would need to do really is just get the bit locker key because if we double click it it's just asking for the key we'll need to make sure that uh, we do get the key from the client himself because the only way you can really get it from there is to go to your Microsoft account and then there is a page where you can get your bit locker recovery key it's tied to your Microsoft account so we're gonna go ahead and do that we definitely need to go ask the client about that because there's no other way to really get it once it's been locked that's just kind of the way it is uh, for it but at least we see the drive there at least the data is safe and it's intact which is a good thing because that's all we really care about is just getting off the data go shut off this and then we can go install windows it's going to see the actual drive itself there just like it sees it here all right so now we do see again the usb which is going to be our main usb there and we're going to go ahead and boot to that and this is going to be our installer Okay, so when you get to the screen, it's going to tell you still that this is actually missing. We need to get a storage driver off of it, well, which is fine. So what we want to do is you want to go to load driver, and obviously it's not going to be there. So what we need to do is we need to go back to um, go to the driver support page and make sure that we are able to get that driver and we need to extract it over so then this the computer can go ahead and read it. So just put in HP drivers and you'll see support.hp.com and then there's a driver page and you can let it let it detect it, but obviously you're probably doing other stuff on the computer, or if you're going through the bootable, you could do it for here as well. So you want to make sure you enter your serial number. Once you put all that in, once you put in your information, then it's going to show your laptop here. And it's important, this part, that you pick the right OS. Um, if you're going to be installing Windows 11, you want to make sure you put 11. Uh, if you're installing um, Windows 10, you want to make sure you put Windows 10. And also there's a version for it too. Um, we did look up on ours. If you're not sure which version it may be, you could try either one or you can uh, it's really hard to tell because if you have an installer you're not too sure which one it is you could probably just put windows 11 it might be okay so i think i'm going to go i think mine's a little bit newer so i think i'm going to go with the 21h2 and we want to go ahead we can download either one it doesn't really make a difference i guess we can download both of them maybe so if we're not too sure we can go to that so we'll go to this page and we want to go to all drivers just scroll down and say it says driver storage which is perfect and there's only one um, we can download one of each one just to be sure because we don't know which um, Windows 11 version we have. Or if you're not sure, just download both of them. Uh, we put no, thanks, I'll install manually. And I'm just going to install it to a drive I have. You can see I already do have one here that does have it. And because I was testing it a little bit before, so it's ready there. You can just save it to wherever you want to make sure you save it to your 
any type of USB that you have. You go to the USB drive itself, and we, we want to go where this is actually uh, allocated. So you'll see that there's an exe file. Uh, the storage driver on the Windows isn't going to run an exe file, so you need to extract the exe file. So you want to go to 7-zip, or if you have any extractor, like using 7-zip, you can go to the website, download it from there. It's an easy way to extract files, and we want to extract it. And what it's going to do is it's going to have a folder now, and this is perfect. This is all we really need. Uh, if you're not sure or if you're having trouble, download the other Windows 11 version or download Windows 10, whichever you're installing and whichever one you're having trouble with. So we'll go back to the camera now. I'm going to go ahead and extract uh, my USB from the other computer I have here. And I believe this will just should show up and work. Um, I did plug in Windows 11 actually again. So I do have Windows 11 in here because I want to show Windows 11. It's the same uh, startup as Windows 10, pretty much the same thing. So it's not too big of a deal. So what we want to do is, now I want to hit browse now because I do have a USB installer. This is just mine, it has Windows, <laughs> the Windows installer there. And we want to go to where the folder is called. So it does recognize that there's a folder. And let's go zoom in. And it shows that SP135584. Now again, making this video, it might be something called something different. Uh, I'm not too sure which what is going to be called there. Now we want to go to there and we want to hit F6 under folder and just hit OK. There's two. This one that is INF and we want to make sure we hit the right storage there. So this is the driver that we want to just want the VMD controller. Let's go ahead and install that. Alright, and now we have all of our drives here. Everything's listed and it's show, showing up here. Um, we also do see that there's, there's data partitions. There's lots of other things that are actually here because we decided to keep our data and we're trying to go ahead and see if we can get it off there. You're seeing that one may be full. It may show that it's nothing there because this is a, a more of a bit log drive. We don't want to go and install everything on here yet until we get the data off. If you have data, um, we do have another part about this video that does talk about data. Otherwise, if you just want to install it, you can delete all of these partitions and then you can install it on the one that's going to show that's the biggest size drive. You don't want to install it on the small one because that's that's more of a just obtaining cache that you have to do. So that's really all you have to do and everything looks to be pretty solid here. Okay guys, so if you guys enjoy watching this video, uh, please leave a like. It really does help us a lot. Subscribe for more content. We do lots of uh, liquid spill repairs. We do lots of data recoveries and we also do lots of stuff like this, which is more software repairs to show you guys that we see any issues that we really see come in our shop here to make it easier for you guys to either get your data or just anything well known that we think should be put out there so you guys are learning as we're learning and we just always like to show you guys, keep you guys involved there. So anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed watching and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.